listeners, you were so right about Lorca. Good job. Hello and welcome to Feminist Frequencies Star Trek Discovery Recap. Freecast. I'm your host, Anita Sarkeesian, and I am joined by the magnificent Ebony Astor. Every week is getting better and better with the intros. Nice. I wonder when I'm going to run out of uh, adjectives never, for you. Never, because I'm that awesome. I might, Keep I it might have to dip into some like less awesome ones every now and again. I'll stop you. <laughs> I'm sure you will. All mm-hmm. right, so we will be discussing Star Trek Discoveries episode twelve called called calting fucking hell called oh already ambitions. already we are killing Man, it. I am I'm just so done with the show. Like I just, <laughs> I'm like oh. oh I'm so I had some people actually ask me like why are you podcasting it if you hate it so much? I'm like well because we said we would do it so we're still doing it. Well, see and you like, have you have an. an excellent reason for continuing to do it which is that when you say you're going to do something you do it I actually and I wrote this down because I, I want to be held to account but as shitty as this show is and make no mistake it's terrible I found myself entertained this whole episode maybe because it was garbage maybe because there's some kernel of goodness there and of course by the end of the episode which we'll get to my mind uh y'all listen i don't have room for all this banana soup that my brain is pumping (laughs) out i was just completely delighted by how whoever is in charge of what's going on week to week uh, i'm blanking on the showrunner's name um they oh, just Brian decided Fuller? to look. He's not on it anymore. Yeah, it's Brian not Brian Fuller's Fuller. Gone. Yeah, but they just went full tilt boogie and were like, <laughs> get into it. Man. Okay, so I actually, um, I'm in Chicago and I'm recording at a friend's house. And um, so I have a couple people. Mm, who humble brag. It. Anita has how? friends. I was like, how is that a humble brag? Anita leaves the house. <laughs> humble brag. <laughs> well, I guess that is to you because you mm-hmm. don't ever leave your house. Not if I um, can help it. I know exactly. Um, But anyways, I was watching it with them and one of them had watched a couple of episodes and given up and he's a big Star Trek fan. And the other one is just a friend who was hanging out and like they were like, what the fuck is wrong with this show? Like Mm -hmm. at one point, one of them said, is the bad acting like a part of the shtick? Like they legit, like they, I was like Star like, Wars, like Star Wars, when people were like, listen, you know, uh, George Lucas is actually like making his actors be one note um, for a reason. And, you know, right minded people were like, yeah, OK, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, man, this episode, I feel like was exceptionally bad. Like it, it the show had, had ebbed a little bit, you know, like there's some episodes we, we liked a little bit more and some that got really bad. And this one was just from the fucking beginning to the very end was awful. Like the dialogue was written by a goddamn machine. Yeah. Like it was every cliched narrative writing. It was exposition from hell. It was like Anita and the acting was Anita. so bad. Anita. Yeah. Have you ever been afraid of a ghost? (laughs) Oh, so terrible. So terrible. Okay, where do we start? So we start where, also who fucking cares, but we start with Michael and Lorca on a ship and they're they're going to the Imperial Palace uh, because Emperor Giorgio has summoned them and they're going to try to find some data that we just found out that they couldn't find and they're hoping to get like they just they made a big fucking leap here in terms of what information we knew but whatever i Mm -hmm. will take it over the bullshit of having to deal with that anyways so that's where we're at right and michael is is struggling with the fact that the giorgio that she knows and loves is dead because of something that she started and right she says something like logic tells me she's not the woman i betrayed but emotions are difficult Blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, um, exactly. Blah, 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 whatever is exactly right. Which Here's the thing. And this is, you know, we say this every fucking week, but like these are not bad concepts. Like the concept no, of no. Michael learning how to feel emotional connection and be human and the grappling with like literally seeing someone who you love in front of you that you thought was dead or that is dead. Right. Like that's yeah. 
really heady stuff that I think is fascinating and interesting psychological threads. Mm -hmm. This show cannot do anything interesting. No. <laughs> like, no. It can't do subtle. It can't do interesting. It can't do de deep in any way. Yeah, no. And you know what? Maybe that's why I'm starting to be entertained by this show because I also live out loud, Anita. I have no subtlety switch. <laughs> Everything I do is bold print, underlined and that's what this show essentially is like there are amazing ideas here but the minute you think wow there's going to be something really kind of um, nuanced and complicated and provocative about the way this is going to be treated they immediately go back to like third grade um level ex exposition uh and treatment you know so it, it, like I, I have hope that this thing is going to get better i doubt why that it will why why? Why do because you Because I love like, Star Trek so much. Possible Be because possible 12 I episodes in. Because 12. I love Star Trek so much. And hey, there are tons of shows that, you know, get their feet after the first season, like your beloved Parks and Rec. Come on. Come on, Anita. I'm that, just saying. Hey, no, no. Uh, 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 follow me here. Follow me here. Like, it got better. You know? It got okay, better. Okay, I, I, some I also... Correct. I did not like Parks and Rec when I first watched it. I gave up on it and then I was told to give it another chance. But I think this is different. Like, I do not have whatever we're we will see, I guess what I, I you know what? It is useful that we have differences of opinions on this mm -hmm. matter, I guess, or else we mm -hmm. just really would just throw this into a dumpster fire and not yeah. bother. Tell me um, this. Was there anything you enjoyed about this episode? Because I have not, about 40 not things. A, single thing i hated this episode through and fucking through even little things like okay for one oh, when, oh one thing i have one yeah. thing would you would you like i liked when tilly said look at his skin it's so dewy i must have blacked out because i don't recall that at all and P.S. Spoiler alert! I'm not gonna go back and try and find that <laughs> moment <laughs> so i'm just gonna take it, your word for it, it. Was, it was at the very beginning when Stamets and Saru are looking at, um, oh, sorry, Tilly and Saru are looking at Stamets and he's like, they're like, I think he's doing better with the spore therapy mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, she's just being the Tilly that we, we talk about really liking, yeah. right? Where she's like, I don't know if he's getting better or if it's just in my mind, but look at his skin. It's so dewy. And it's just really Aww. cute. And yeah. 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 That's okay. It. That's okay. the one thing. Uh, the things that I loved, one, the space minivan. Okay, so when, <laughs> when when Burnham is piloting Lorca over to the Imperial Palace, whatever, she's in a straight up like just soccer mom van circa 2300. <laughs> and I was like, I could vibe with that. Like I could throw the kids in the back. I was into it. I was super loved it. But also um, we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Whoever is doing the costuming on this show gets all the props because the mirror universe costumes from T to B top to bottom. Shout out to Jason Manzoukas there. So good. Like every single one of those outfits is just giving me my life on a weekly basis from the shoes up to the floor. The dark lipstick. Are you kidding me? Come on. That smoky eye. I was with it. I would, <laughs> I would do my junior year in the mirror universe. I'm so into it. Uh, yes. I agree. I just, I hated this episode so intensely that I just don't care. I just, I can't, like, I, uh, okay, there was, so I looked away for a second to take a note, and I looked mm -hmm. back up, and I remember seeing the, like, the, the outside of the palace, like, mm -hmm. as they were coming in. Was it the cheesiest looking shit you've ever seen? Like, yeah, and that's it why I loved it. It I looked think? like something out of Flash Gordon. This entire episode oh, looked man, like something out of so Flash bad. Gordon, you know? And there was all these weird, like, there, so there was one point, there was this weird audio when um, Pal Palace, uh, George, George, fucking Pal, sorry, y'all. Uh, um, one I of our take, Twitter I followers take... called it our typically ramshackle podcast. And I was like, <laughs> that's, I've, so it's, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's actually really good. Yeah. Um, when Giorgio and Michael are having dinner together. And um, and Giorgio's like, I know you are betraying me and blah, 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 and pulls out a knife. It sounds like a sword sheathing and it's like at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. Like the sound design was so bad. I don't like I don't know what's going on. Th this particular episode had so many elements that weren't good. Or I was just finally listening to it on a real sound system that could be as it. opposed to my shitty house. Yeah. But um, that shit of like 
they when they set up the like you should know what you want in a kelpian and then she mm-hmm. serves her fucking kelpian gills or whatever yeah but were you happy to know like because you would ask last week and the people delivered they were like you were like hey how come his threat ganglia never started jiggling you know which was a great question turns out somebody oh. somebody probably ate them shits you know? <laughs> oh god Someone's been straight up uh, nibbling on Saru's that was head. Horrible. Listen, okay, I know you that know, was you're, horrifying. You're a Star Trek fan, but did you ever go to the Star Trek experience in Las Vegas at the Hilton? It's not there anymore, but it was this no. amazing like walk through museum exhibit, so you could see all kinds of cool memorabilia from the various shows. And this was, you know. 10, 15 years ago now. So at that point, I think, you know, Enterprise was in the mix, but uh, I don't think they had too much Enterprise stuff there. But anyway, so you would go through, then there'd be this like, you know, interactive VR ride. Um, And then when you came out, there was a gift shop where you could buy cool stuff, but there was also Quark's Bar. So it was this bar made up to look like Quark's Bar from DS9, Uh right? Emperor Giorgio's (laughs) like meal room looked like Quark's Bar. By which I mean, not that it looked like something out of the 24th century, but that it looked like something out of Vegas. It looked like something, you know, just like, yeah, just like cheap. But I was so like, you know me, my brand is I love trashy. I love when people try and fail. And so (laughs) this episode (laughs) just really hit my sweet spot. Oh my God. I, we are, do not agree with that shit. Although I, so I did go to, um, in Seattle, the EMP museum, or that's probably redundant. I forget. Yeah. What you went with me. It's, it's a, yeah. Okay. It was with you. Mm. We went, I was wondering, I was like, who the fuck did I go to with that? You were like, um, it was so we beautiful, this, beautiful, funny. I know. Incredibly I like, plugged in black woman. Who was it? Yeah. I've ever had in mm-hmm. my entire life. There's photos of us in the Jeffries tube. Um, anyway, they yeah. had a Star Trek exhibit, uh, and it was delightful and we did all the silly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that was a nice memory. That, that was the I thing that about. happened. Yeah. 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 Um, um, all right. So they're in the palace and, mm-hmm. uh, okay. Like just shut the fuck up. So she's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, she, she's like, I'm going to kill you because you betrayed me, even though you're my daughter. Dun, dun, dun. And then mm-hmm. they're about to execute her. And like, she's being nice by doing it quickly. And there's that whole like room with the guards and everything. And then that's the time when Michael is like, Hey, by the way, I'm not who you think I am. And I'm just going to tell you this in front of all these people really calmly. And right. then Giorgio's like, oh, cool. Boom. And there's some like magical flying fucking star. Dead fr- yeah. Like killer just, frisbee. Like, it was dope. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. And so I'm like, you didn't mention that when you had a knife to your throat. Like what? Like just the timing of all of this is fucking bullshit. I, yeah. I can't. Well, and also I remember thinking like, um, as an, as a Starfleet officer, it seems really stupid, <laughs> not to mention counterintuitive, to reveal to an incredibly like uh, xenophobic, warlike society the existence of the mirror universe, which I mean, granted, they already knew about the mirror universe, right? But to be like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm from the mirror universe. I'm not who you think I am. And I have a plan for getting back. That just seemed really strategically dumb. Like, are uh-huh. we setting shit up for <laughs> the mirror universe, you know, ISS to come stomping in and take over? You know, like I, I get you don't want to die, yeah. burn them. But I just feel like for and the does, greater good, I don't know. You might have had to take that L. Yeah, oh, totally. And it does sound like they're setting it up so that they can use this in the future if the show keeps staying on the air. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it's some mm-hmm. some season down the road. They'll be like, oh, look who's back. And yeah. we're going to be yeah. like, oh, fucking die. Stupid show. Mm-hmm. But there was there was just the cheesiest shit that happened right here, too, where she was like this is from the united federation of planets and apparently so are you and you're like yeah uh yeah what like uh i just said that and then there's that whole like they're they're trying to really drive home as if they haven't already that they're evil so they're like she says with disgust that the like the united federation of planets is so awful because i believe in equality and freedom and cooperation Cooperation. (laughs) yeah and then and then she's like your destructive ideals that fuel rebellions. I will not let you influence us again. And you're like, oh, shut the fuck up. We get it. Like, is there literally no other way that you could articulate, like, or demonstrate that you have differing values? No, this is why this whole thing seemed like, you know, when I say it reminded me of Flash Gordon, like, it reminded me of, (laughs) it reminded me of that 1980s movie, Flash Gordon, which, P.S., was super racist (laughs) with Migna Merciless, but it was this very, like, golden age of sci-fi you know kind of like 
overwrought, melodramatic, you know, um, kind of writing and, and, you know, um, and acting. And like, I really enjoyed Michelle Yeoh just getting to ham it up in the mirror universe. We didn't get enough of that in last week's episode, which is part of why I didn't enjoy it. Also, Sarek's beard, which <laughs> sucked. Um, someone on Twitter <laughs> pointed out that it was a callback to Spock's beard in Mirror Mirror. And I was like, yeah, but it was a shitty callback. So anyway, um, but shout out to people who, you know, point out how much they love uh, Star Trek along with me because I love it when people write back uh, to me on Twitter and they're like, hey, I caught this too. But anyway, I love like just the campiness that a mirror universe episode allows for. It's not just the outfits, but it's also just like the scenery chewing and Michelle Yo put her foot in it. It was so great. Anita, not- I need you to go back and watch this episode until you like it. Cause it no. was terrible, but it was so good. <laughs> terrible. That is like the ultimate form of torture. That's like the, what the mirror universe torture chambers are. The agonizers, me, baby. It's like Which making also- me watch this. See, this is another thing. You know how you were saying, like, you know, there are good ideas and then they fail to deliver on them. So when last week, when he, we didn't know that Lorca was Mirror Universe Lorca. And dun, he's, dun, dun. Yeah. And then he sacrifices himself um, and willingly goes into those torture chambers. It is moving and it is, you know, it, it takes your breath away. Kind of the, the courage that that takes. Right. Like we had a quick moment. Granted, it was seriously like the length of a moment where we thought, hey, maybe Lorca isn't such a, you know, piece of dog doo doo. Um, but if he goes into the chambers and the torture isn't quite as torturous, like I'm not trying to see him, you know, actually be in pain, but it just takes a lot of the stakes away when Burnham is like, ah, I'm going to shoot you up with the, like this nerve deadener. So the agonizers aren't quite so bad. Like I get it, but also it just, it lowers the stakes if he's not actually having to experience that. And we're not having to, it just, yeah, it, it takes I, away a little bit of the importance of like I'm his not- sacrifice. I'm not with you on that at all because like he's already been tortured for fucking ever. Like he's been tortured nonstop. I think it's okay to give him a little bit of a little bit of credit there. A little but bit of ibuprofen. Point, yeah, right. A little like space the, Advil. The, the the reason they did that right was to show like to build up the sympathy and be like, oh man, we feel bad for this guy and blah 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 blah. And then the, and then like the bait and switch of but Mirror Lorca is real Lorca. There's only one Lorca. Like did he kill? non mirror Lorca like I can't wait to find one? out I can't wait to find out and I know he, that you are dreading swap you are dre- and shit you are dreading having to go into next Sunday and watch the next episode Hate but I it. literally cannot wait I'm like, you, on board I'm like I'm actually having I, I what I realized is that I hated this episode so much that I'm having a hard time even talking about it like if there's a there's a threshold for me of bad mm-hmm, where I can mm-hmm. be like funny and quippy and like do this and I'm just like ugh. Okay, no problem Anita no. let me take over you're totally leading next this one. up but the hold hair on report. hair report what? don't forget hair report okay, well, let's 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 hold on let me finish this section really quick mm-hmm. I won't forget the hair report of course it's the most I won't let crucial you. important part show of is. this podcast show is. I know um the line when Giorgio was like in Lorca you saw a father and I was like oh no and then she keeps mm-hmm. going and she goes mm-hmm. until you grew up and found more and I was like no, and I yep. actually screamed. And mm-hmm. the, obviously, the people I was watching with had no fucking idea what was going on, and thought I was like losing it. I was like, I was so like, oh my god, are they yeah. doing that gross thing that we said not to do? And is yep. Lorca doing that creepy shit with Michael? And then, and then you find out that Mirror Lorca is real. Or that mm-hmm. Lorca is Mirror Lorca, and whatever, whatever. But I was like, that is gross. And we talked about how fucking gross that is all along, yep. right? Yep. And then they did it because this show is a monster pile of dog shit. Yeah, it is. It's a total monster pile of dog shit. And I, I'm so sorry, people. I love it. I absolutely. I'm so episode, angry at how bad it is. Episode, it just, it made me laugh so hard. So, you know, we record this podcast pretty much immediately after watching the show on Sunday nights. I've been laughing for the last 20 minutes so hard. I could barely keep it together. I couldn't wait to I'm come just, in I'm and legit record this angry. I feel like. This whole podcast is is me being like I'm angry and you being like it's funny and I don't know how this is fun to listen to. I don't but, you know. I, I, I yeah. don't know what to but tell the people. The, I'm being so honest here that I was entertained I by this bullshit. 
there, I don't see the campy. It's mm-hmm. just bad. Like, there's a difference between campy and bad, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I know that sometimes the line is blurred, but, like, there is – being campy is a very specific style and mm-hmm. a very specific tone. And I feel like the very first episode of the Mirror the mirror episode of the, the – the two, two episodes ago mm-hmm. did it. Like, they did the campy, and it was fucking delightful, and we liked that episode. And then it's, like, it's – it is taking itself very seriously. I and think the thing uh, about Giorgio and like my, um, uh, Michelle Yao, right, mm-hmm. um, is that like she's she might be playing it up a certain way, but it doesn't read because nobody else is doing it. Right? Yeah, like I guess just I, would, I would disagree that 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 camp um, the camp hasn't been achieved in this episode. I think you know there's a difference between active camp and passive camp. And if you think I'm gonna break down a Susan Sontag taxonomy of camp right now, <laughs> you are wrong, people. But I will hit it up on Twitter. So follow me at Ebony Aster. But anyways, All so right. there's active camp and there's passive camp. But part of what makes camp work for me is when a piece of media, when a text does take itself very seriously. And fails to achieve its aim. So it's not, I don't think that these episodes are kind of alighting camp by, you know, winking at the audience. I think they actually, I, I think the showrunners, the writers, the actors, like they actually believe they're doing something and they're not. And something that's what's bad. so great about it, you know? But it's just so over the top. It's just so over the top. And yeah, there definitely could be some more like, you know, you know, mastication um, of the the supporting actors, the guest stars in the episode, such that they reach the the heights or the lows of the emperor's kind of like, you know, hammy, malicious evilness. You know, I, yeah. I would definitely love more of that. But hey, at this point, we're in the mirror universe. Maybe we'll get it. Yeah. Have hope. Keep well, so, hope alive, Anita. So here's a question. Is like the justification of Lorca going to be... Um, that like, this is a real long con. Like if yeah. he was trying to trick his way back in, yeah. like, did he know, did he know the mycelium network was a thing? How does other, so like, so, okay. Hold on. So in conjunction to that, let's move on to Stamets because mirror Stamets, when we're doing the everything in reverse, but here we go. Mm-hmm. Um, mirror Stamets, when Stamets wakes up, mirror Stamets also wakes up. And Mirror Stamets also is a part of the Mycelium Network. Right. How the fuck do they know about it? And, like, how did Lorca know about it? And, like, how are they going to retroactively make this all make sense? I, I don't know why you ask these questions like they're ever going to get answered in a satisfactory way. They're not going to. We talked about this in the last episode. There is a real, like, narrative just free-for-all once you go into a Mirror Universe because it's like, oh, everything that we need is exactly the same and still legible to us even though it's a parallel fucking universe even though there's no way that these same people should know each other should be coupled up together should be serving on the same ship should look the same none of it makes sense so uh, who knows anita there'll be some bullshit hand wavy explanation but it's not going to satisfy you i feel like we need to get listen you need to just relax into the illogicality <laughs> of this and just soak it up the show uh, makes no sense and it's determined to make no sense i mean <laughs> it is <laughs> the last five minutes of the show where, oh my god <laughs> i wish just, you could see Andy's is, face right now this, this is such a delight bananas, because <laughs> <laughs> oh my god when when the dude is like Lorca, say my sister's name. Say my sister's name. And, you know, <laughs> and we all still think Lorca is like our, I'm calling him our Lorca, right? But like normie Lorca, you know, like, oh man, how is he going to get it? He doesn't even know who this dude is talking about, what's going on. And then there's a reveal and he fights his way out and beats that guy down and puts like the death earphones on him or whatever. And, oh my God, I lost my fucking mind. It was just and like, he, what and he's on, even happened? Happening. It's like they had 17 writers and they said to everyone, okay, everybody gets You're two right pages. One line each. Yeah, you know, like everybody gets two pages. We're just going to throw it all together and film it all. It was bananas. Oh my God. Okay, let's do let's do something delightful, which hopefully mm-hmm. is delightful. Do the hair report and start with Giorgio because her hair fucking killed it. Oh, yo, listen, the flat irons in the mirror universe clearly yes. get very hot. That shit looked dope. And the, so like good. I said, the smoky eye. Oh, oh my goodness. And then straight up, 1987 Brooklyn style two finger ring. Girl, I was so on point. I was I was just like, yes, I'm so ready for her to adopt me. 
Michael Burnham wasn't a good daughter to her, I'll be a good daughter for you. Just hook me up with let me borrow some of your clothes, Emperor Giorgio. Mm -hmm. Philippa. You'll do, you'll do her bidding. Okay? Yeah. No problem. Uh, but to the most important part of the hair report, Michael Burnham's hair, I think, has finally gotten to me such that I am actually, like, for real, this is legit. I'm not lying here. Everybody get closer to your, uh, get closer to your laptop, get closer to your mobile device. I'm about to break it down for you. I am about to go get a tapered cut like Michael Burnham. Not Ooh. Michael Burnham's hair in this episode, but the general shape, because it just looks too good week to week. Granted, I don't have like a hair and makeup person to keep my shit moisturized, but I'm good in 2018, I'm determined to rock a Michael Burnham. So you heard it here first. When I get it done, I will post pictures on my Twitter. My face will be photoshopped out and I'll put Burnham's face on it, but it'll be <laughs> my head. Fuck? <laughs> Ebony. But no, it just it looks like I'm so into it. I mean, that shit just looks sleek and geometric and like I think thick. And she's got that 4C, oh, just density, which I don't have. I mean, I, I told you this weekend, Anita, I tried cutting my hair and I did wind up looking like a fuzzy walnut. But I'm going to go to a salon <laughs> this time and try and have somebody straighten my shit out because I'm determined to rock so much cosplay this year, starting with Mirror Universe shit. I'm going to start with Tilly and then work my way up to the Emperor. Um, and I'm starting with okay. that haircut. Like what? Like one a month? I don't know. Like I'm starting from scratch here. So give me like two a year. So, you know. Two a year. All right. Yeah. That's reasonable. Yeah. That's reasonable. You got a lot of cosplay goals this year. You've got There's so much good time. stuff. I know. I know. Yeah. Black Panther, you Black know. Black Yeah. So, like, oh, I, man. Can yeah. We, can we do Black? Can we just talk about Black Panther instead of this bullshit? Yeah. And for everyone who hasn't gotten your ticket yet for opening weekend, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you because them shits are sold out. I'm yeah. so excited. So excited. All right. Let's get back to this bullshit. We do need to talk uh, about Stamets. But that was like, We do yeah, need to talk okay, about so, Stamets. Um, Stamets is doing the spore therapy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, spore drive is the only way they can find, they can go home if Michael and Lorca fail. Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. just assume that he will help them and that he can help them if they he regains consciousness. Like, they're acting like that's actually, like, he doesn't get a choice in the matter. Well, when um, is he ever, you know? I know, right. Um then you finally get to talk to Mirror Stamets, who's also in the Mycelium Network fuck, for some fucking reason. And he makes this joke that says, there is a god, and she's very mad at you right it now. So and tired. you're like, oh, come it on. It was so, so tired. And at that point, I was like, it's not enough that I have to watch Stamets. Mm -hmm. Now I get two Stamets. I know. It like, was it just really felt like a punishment, bad. you know? But so then, then when... Okay. After oh like no, the, no! This did not. Don't tell me this shit got to you. I know what Anita, you're about to say, and I just Anita, I'm having none of this shit. Anita, no, no, Marie, no. Nestra, mm. Jessica, Josephine. You got to get a little bit of like Sarkeesian. a little bit of fucking coldness in your heart, Ebony, because this is I have it. I know. Shit. I'm surprised. I'm surprised every time a real human emotion manages to germinate in my dead <laughs> heart but i did and of course it's because cobra was there right but so like after that it, like bootleg off-brand you know horror movie type thing where we're seeing like shadows of cobra running through the halls and you know like which felt like old doctor who to me a little bit it, not like even uh, don't yeah. yeah don't even sorry like, i'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm doctor sorry. Who that was that way. it was just it was bootleg but anyways when they so they're talking whatever and cobra is just so lovely He's just so lovely that he makes Stamets less dumb to me. No. You know? Mm -mm. He does. And mm -mm. then so when Stamets is I like, just wish that Stamets died and Colbert lived. That's what happens. You go for me listen, you gonna have people popping up in my Twitter feed talking about how we hate queer characters because you can't I mean, hold it in, you know? <laughs> and I'm here to say that I'm I'm just saying I like Colbert better and I wish he had more of a role on the show. And I, know. I wish he wasn't gone forever. Oh my god, he's so so good. But like when they're brushing their teeth together, it was a moment and I Okay, I, it was not I I sorry i just hated the show so much that and i actually made a note being like brushing your teeth is your favorite time together shut the yes. fuck up no because like no. girl no. will you let no. them have that moment of intimacy no didn't you, i won't didn't you because, even like their you know star why? trek pajamas those were some good pajamas here's why i won't let them have it is because it was some bullshit like fairy godmother garbage and then the more i started thinking about it was i was like so so that's not actually colbert is that actually like mirror colbert's whatever what did i whatever? tell you stop like, asking questions 
questions. Asking. Stop asking <laughs> questions. I feel like I'm the mom here, and you're the three year old being like, "Why is the sky blue? Why, you know, like, stop asking questions. I want to have know. answers. I like I don't logic. Have answers. Yeah. Well, and then no wonder this show is getting on your nerves because none of it is ever gonna uh. make sense. None of it. This is not gonna be. Some, you know what it is gonna be? It's gonna be like Lost. You know where oh, fuck you're, there's gonna be some that. like shit I didn't where like you Lost see, either. Okay. What? Oh, have we we've never talked about Lost, huh? Okay, I'm gonna Here need go. you to I'm Here gonna need go. you to pencil in a special bonus podcast because we're gonna have to break this down. What? Oh God, I don't even remember. Come on, that I, oh that's my gone from people, my brain. People, do you see what I have to work with on a weekly basis? It's that just was some people, bonkers shit. I'm just saying. It, yeah, delightfully bonkers. But my point was, okay, and the, like there was all these questions and cool ideas that you know really never got resolved properly. And it's gonna be the same thing here. Just don't ask any questions. Um, let's talk about your favorite, mm-hmm. Tyler. You know what pisses me off about this episode, too? Everything. Everything, everything pisses yeah. me off, including the fact that Tyler's going to fucking live. Yeah. Yeah. We ain't I getting was... rid of him. We're not getting rid of him that oh, easy. Oh, God. Nope. So Tyler is, remember on the last episode, um, what's her name? Michael beamed Tyler onto the ship and blah, blah, blah. And so they don't really know what's going on or why Tyler thinks he's a Klingon. They go to Terrell and say, Laurel. To- oh, Laurel. Fuck. Um, They go to her and say, like, you have to fix this or whatever. And so they, like, guilt her and have this whole moment and whatever. And, like, I actually don't – okay, I can't believe I'm saying this. I don't hate Laurel as a character. And, Mm -hmm. like, she was the – like, I I think it's because I was so angry with everyone else on the show that I was like, oh, I can get down with this interaction because it's literally the only one that's not pissing me off, even though they're all pissing me off. But here's the thing that I cannot understand. (laughs) After all of this bullshit that they did – she can reverse it with some fucking la- lasers and some chance. Seriously, like it was. They were like, "We are stumped. There's nothing we can do. <laughs> none of our science, none of our medical technology can help us." And she's just like, "Hook me up with those Freddy Krueger gloves." <laughs> and, and it was all done. Like all of those people in the medical base should be fired. They should be fired. Dude, but hey, we, we but got some good like, serene time. They cut him open and like rearranged his organs and like shoved a brain inside of him and crap in, in his beneath that man's inferior carriage, yep, as she yep. said. Um, and so she just like aimed some laser beams at him and it's all good now. Let me ask you this question. And why would, you and you need why would she do Wait, But why would she do that? Right, like she's clearly upset. She wants her dude. She wants this thing, but like, why would she do it? Because this, well, this relates to my question. I'm assuming that there's like a Volk suit somewhere, just like in the empty <laughs> box. <laughs> and she's like, maybe you can download his brain onto this space thumb drive, and I can so re-upload this poor that guy, shit. Yeah, this poor guy is just gonna get bounced around from body to body. Species Listen, to species. yeah, Volk is like. It, Lorel is not even trying to let Volk go, and she's not trying to, you know, um, get Tyler back to being okay just out of the goodness of her heart. I know she's got an end game. That's my girl. I love her. Um, but yeah, I'm, I am wondering, like, what did they do with Volk's big headed body? And I'm sure it's sitting on ice somewhere, <laughs> you know, like Han Solo style. And uh, I'm sure he's going to get re uploaded. Like, if this show gets uh, renewed for a second season, which I assume it either already has or will. It already has. Yeah. It already has. Um, like, Volk absolutely is coming back, you know? Like, we, we need to, the, the Mirror Universe, I. I don't know. I mean, maybe it turns out that people from the mirror universe are going to be like our primary antagonist, but I think I suspect it's going to be more like the Borg where they pop up every so often and menace people. Um, but there's got to be a, a primary antagonist yeah. within our universe. And I'm assuming it's going to be, it's going to be Vulk. And I'm, oh. I'm, I'm happy that he's going to get his big head back. Cause I bet he's been just <laughs> like, Oh, this head is so tiny. I hate this tiny um, head. I, I met someone this weekend who really likes the show, and I promptly gave him a very intense stink guy. And was <laughs> and like, what the fuck is wrong with you? you? You took him out at the knees, and you were like, you don't deserve to live. Um, No. Mm-hmm. But I did tell him that he has bad taste. So, well, you know, he does, objectively. <laughs> it's objectively true. <laughs> did you Did you get his name? He can be a special guest on the podcast next week. Well, I may, that is true, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to deal with someone who actually likes the show. 
Uh, but sure. I mean, who knows what they might manage to convince me to see. Like literally, if it were not for our amazing listeners, all three of y'all hitting me up and telling me about like interesting theories that you have learned about or you came up with on your own or reminding me about like, you know, old episodes that are being alluded to. We, I mean, as ramshackle as this podcast is, it would be straight up like, you know, Boonie's outhouse. Yeah. The reason that I brought this up was because he, we were talking about the Tyler Vock thing and he, (laughs) because I don't know shit about Star Trek, apparently Mm -hmm. uh, in the original series, they did this. There was a character that got cut up and fucking shit put into his brain. And so that this was a a callback to that. Like I'm real, like there are so many callbacks to the original series, which is definitely my weakest point. I wonder if he's referring um, to the fact that like the, in the original series, the Klingons looked much different. They were, almost completely humanoid and they had like terrible brown skin makeup on and like these gross and in quotation marks Fu Manchu mustaches and the way they retconned that by the time of the next generation was saying that that was like um some genetic experimentation that had gone on like it was a eugenics program that the Klingon Empire had it was fucking that's how they just fucking bananas um so to explain the reason why the Klingons looked so different from the original mm-hmm. series to the next generation and then forward. And of course, the Klingons we're singing now look like they might as well be, you know, out of the H.R. Geiger studio. Like they don't look anything like, you know, Worf, for instance, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, like the idea of Klingons like tampering around with DNA and morphology and everything that is canonical. So. Yeah. Do I mean, is it any more ludicrous than the move from original series Klingons to Worf than to suggest that someone with an eight foot long chromium dome could get that squished down <laughs> into the head of Tyler? I don't know. You, every every person has to come to their own reckoning with that. Uh, I guess so. Anita, so this show, I got, this episode, I, got nothing else. I can't believe I'm uh, like... It, it, I felt like I was watching a couple of four-year-olds play, you know, like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and no, that's, no, this is what happened, and, like, just, and I was delighted, I was just straight up delighted, and I know that people expect me to hate on shit every week, and there was plenty that was just bonkers and unenjoyable, but I'm, I sit before you, a woman who had a very enjoyable 45 minutes in front of my laptop laughing at this bullshit show. Oh, I have something. Saru. Now, oh, we, Saru. Talked, we talked about the shape of water in our uh, flagship podcast, Feminist Frequency Radio, last week and about mm-hmm. how much I hated that bullshit movie. Um, yep. But I'm Carolyn worried. loved it. Just, yeah, Carolyn. So well, if, if you want to hear us all... Get gang up on Carolyn. Yeah, about exactly. That. Oh my god, out. Carolyn is too sweet. Poor I don't Carolyn. know how. I don't know how she has managed to not have the spirit beaten out of her. You know, given know. what she has to work with with us. She's but delightful. She is. Um. So we talked about the shape of water, and I'm worried. Like watching that movie, and knowing Star Trek the way I do, and also knowing Tumblr the way I do, I'm worried that there's going to be a romance in Saru's future with some human woman. And it's going to be some twee bird-like doofus like the character in The Shape of Water. And I'm genuinely oh, I was concerned. Like, I, would, I don't think that Saru being in a relationship would be a bad idea. But you're worried that it's going to be some, like, dainty mm-hmm. whatever shit. Just yeah. sort of like, <laughs> uh, you know, we'll just some, uh, I, I'm just, I'm not into it. Um, I yeah, am, I mean, fuck interspecies yeah. love, whatever. That's cool, but... Are there other aliens on board the Discovery? Let them hook up with, you know, a nice alien boy who's on deck or whatever. But sure. don't put them with, like, you know, Eliza character, like, from The Shape of Water. I'll, sure. I will lose the tiny bit of goodwill I have for this show. I support. I support that not happening. Yeah, and I also hope um, that there's an episode in the future where Doug Jones gets to play, like, you know, another random character. Maybe they go to a different mirror universe and Saru is more humanoid and he gets to not wear that makeup because I know that's got to be hot. You know? I mean, Doug Jones primarily does these kinds of roles I know, too, right? I know. Yeah. And I'm worried about him. I don't. I know his skin can't You're breathe. I, just, I am. That's my boy, you know? I worry yeah. about him. Um. So shout out to some listeners on Twitter who totally called the mirror Lorca uh, theory 
that he was a uh, actually mirror Lorca. So nice, nice on you in that predictability. Do you know who it was that called that out? Uh, and there were a couple people. The the one that I can remember right now is at Celia Celia Fenter. Yeah. Um, but I know cool. there were a couple other people. I apologize for not remembering your names. I'll I'll post it um, on Twitter once I, I get yeah. your handles. But there were a couple people who pointed it out and I had not considered it at all. So while I was dancing around my room acting like I was such hot shit for figuring out the Tyler Vogue thing, these people were coming up with the A plus grade conspiracy yeah. theory and they got it right. They got and it right. I love it. We love yes. your theories, even the wackiest ones. So definitely send them to us. We love yes, hearing them. Yes. Um, this also, the Lorca thing, I guess, like retroactively explains why he's such a warmongering shit monkey. Yeah, yeah, you know, I but get also, it. But also, there's nothing, there's nothing satisfying about it to me in any way, but whatever, here we are. I would like to know if, you know, there's some explanation for why he's constantly, you know, digging his hands in that bowl of fortune cookies. I would like that to go away. I wonder if they don't have fortune cookies in mirror universe. And so when he saw them for the first time, he was like, he was like, this are delicious. Yeah. He's like, this is my backstory, man. My (laughs) dad worked in a fucking fortune cookie factory. And like, it's, I I, I have feelings. So this represents feelings. I I can't wait to see who, like what, to find out what happened to Normie, uh, Lorca, like our, (laughs) our real Lorca that we have not met yet. I can't wait for the day. Of that I can't, story. I know. <laughs> and here's the thing is like um jason isaacs is like a, a, a great actor we've talked about this mm-hmm. like i really like him as an actor i thought he was fucking awful in this episode and had literally nothing to work with so i'm curious if we do find the other Lorca and like how he plays that character and what that mm-hmm. would look like you know mm-hmm. so i will look forward to that moment that's our show uh, I I kind of want to apologize for just being so like low energy and shitty this episode. I just really really hated this episode, <laughs> and I, I just I know that I said that a hundred times, but I just feel like I'm failing at my duties of like you being, can't fake the funk, Anita. I just and that's okay. I can't. I just this one really dragged me down. So you know what? Send me some cat gifts. Uh, cheer me up. Hopefully next week is better. I have no hope for that. I don't know why I'm pretending. Uh, if That's all right. Like, Once again, I will carry the show on my back next that's week. Exactly what, that's from, exactly with what's going to happen. With my enthusiasm for shitty media. Well, there is a week coming up where I can't be on the podcast, so we got to figure out who would be a good co-host for you. Ooh, someone, yeah. someone unexpected, or someone who really likes the show. I think that that could be interesting. But yeah. I do worry that if we bring on someone who likes the show, you're going to like get convinced that mm-hmm. it's good, and then my amazing Ebony. Uh-huh. That, Hates on Star Trek Discovery with me is going to be fucking Tyler Vocified. Yeah, well, but then, you know, it'll be so entertaining for the listeners because you'll have to try it and convert me back to the one true religion. But hey, even if I yeah, turn into like we'll a huge, you know, Discovery lover, whatever, you know that on Femme Freak you're Radio. Fired. You're imme- You're immediately fired. Oh, whoa. All right. <laughs> All right, people, for the good of, you know, my rent payments, I'm going to have to go back to, <laughs> okay, to hate. Just it. in case there is any question, that is a joke. Oh, uh-uh. and we, no, no. <laughs> y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. So if something goes down, if something goes down in the court of public opinion, I will be vindicated. OK, great. Great. Yeah. If you like <laughs> this is not a good episode to do, this, but if you like our show. <laughs> Please do us a small favor and rate us on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us get the word out. Mm -hmm. Tell all of your other Star Trek loving fans and friends and people (laughs) in your life. Well, it'll just make them mad if they listen to uh, it. I'm sure they'll love listening to us. Just talk about how much we don't like this show. Yeah. Um, You know, hopefully we're making it somewhat entertaining for you all. Mm -hmm. We are do always want to hear from you. So send us your theories, send us links to videos, tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you want us to chat about. You can find me on Twitter at Anita Sarkeesian, and you can find Ebony at Ebony Aster. You can check out all of our work and our other podcasts, including Feminist Frequency Radio at FeministFrequency.com. Thanks y'all for joining us, and we will talk to you all next week. Bye.